Johnny Deville, your humble cat. I see a lot of familiar faces, so you understand, for the most part, what we do. We travel the universe, collecting stories, grim, horrible, twisted stories, and then we tell them to you. This one, however, is slightly different. Rather than being told what happened the gentle wafting tones of myself, I will instead be verbatim reciting a recording we picked up which we feel best sums up what happened. The Bifrost incident. Any school child could tell you about it. The fall of the old order. 200 years of Asgardian hubris come together in a single, epoch-defining event. The maiden voyage of a train through the stars vanished without a trace. For decades it had been Old Lady Odin's passion project, her long-sought legacy. Shoot a locomotive through that man-made rainbow wormhole. Reduce the time between planets from three months to three days. All the tests had been passed with quite literal flying colours and the train was deemed safe. And what a train it was, gilded with gold and swirls of bismuth mosaic. Every nose turning as Guardian Hobnob was on that train or risk Odin's displeasure. So when it failed to come out the other side, who was left to rule? In the chaos that ensued, no one thought to ask what actually happened to the train. And that's where I come in. Inspector Second Class Lifrasir Edda, New Midgard Transport Police. Because the Ratatosk Express has finally arrived in Midgard, 80 years late. All that's left is the locomotive, the engine room, a pair of twisted skeletons, and the black box. It's more of a history project than a crime scene, but combing through the data still comes down to me. First recording is Odin's launching speech. Nearly a century ruling Asgard, you'd think she'd be a better public speaker. Not rambling on about the glories of her pet science project, as though exporting quicker tyranny to Midgard is all she'd ever dreamed of.
Tusk Express launches. Speed readings peak at 250 miles an hour as the tracks engage. And then the odometer starts to go a little bit weird. Can't work out how far it's traveling or if it's standing still. External cameras are only black and white, but they still manage to capture the shifting, undulating hues within the Bifrost. The train is underway and should be at its destination in less than 72 hours. Don't ask me why. Everyone who understood how the train worked was on it. But that's how long the journey was supposed to take. The footage is corrupted, and distinguishing clear words and images is difficult at best, but I still comb through the first day, desperately looking for anything that might have led to the train's destruction. For a while, I come up empty. Plenty seem unhappy to be making the journey, and even Odin seems less than fully comfortable, spending every hour staring through the glass observation wall of her carriage. But nothing I can put my finger on. Then I see Loki lurking in one of the passenger compartments, and everything starts to make a little more sense. Not much sense, because Loki was supposed to be dead already. But before then, she'd spent 25 years working with a Midgardian terrorist cell, so if anyone was behind the Bifrost incident, it would be her. On the video feed, she doesn't look well. Drawn, haggard, pale. She just sits there for hours, clutching her head. Hardly the behavior of a ruthless saboteur. Police records from before the incident are patchy, but I still managed to get a copy of her arrest and sentencing records. Execution, apparently carried out as planned, but there's something else there. Loki used to work on the Bifrost, right at its inception three decades before the incident. Perhaps Odin couldn't afford to lose her knowledge and secretly swapped out execution for something that would keep her expertise intact. But even through the grainy quality of the playback, it's clear to see whatever Odin did instead messed her head up something awful.
But here I see your face I know so well Loki should be dead But here she sits, a broken shell Walter died, and for that crime We saw her burn in bloody pain Did Odin think to save her for her train? If we were betrayed There's a price to That, that was Thor. High up in Asgard, tipped to take over from Odin when she finally loses it. Thor and Loki have something of a history, used to be friends even. Thor wasn't there when Loki, Odin and Baldur first tested the Bifrost. But he was there when Loki's bomb killed Baldur, 15 years after she disappeared into the Midgard underground. She used a test run of the Bifrost to send through a pair of hijacked missiles. Missile 1 destroyed the track, setting the project back another decade. Missile 2 killed Baldur. From Thor's file, he doesn't seem like the forgiving sort, and it's unclear as he strides towards Odin's carriage whether his rage is because the woman who murdered Baldur still lives, or because of what Odin has done to her mind. It's hard to make out the details of their conversation, but it looks to be intense. Oh, 
lost sight of what you convinced that Thor is the culprit. <laughs> He'd already been poking around with a master key when he stumbled across Loki. And if control of Asgard wasn't motive enough, he just got another big reason to throw a hammer in the works. As he's dragged away by security, he kicks out, apparently in random anger, shattering the lock on one of the passenger compartments. Loki's compartment. I'm just about ready to write it off. When the feed on Thor cuts out, my gaze drifts to the dining car, and I have to do a double take. I wouldn't have recognized her if I hadn't been looking through Loki's file, but I would swear that the chief attendant was Sigan, Loki's wife, and with Fenrir serving five life sentences on the prison planet of Hell, the highest ranking member of the Midgardian resistance. At first I think she's there for Loki, but then I notice Garm and Skull among the cooks, Hearty working the bar. Every one of the serving staff is one of Fenrir's old crew. And then I remember that before the maiden voyage they'd already built terminals on every planet in Yggdrasil, including Hell. They were planning a jailbreak, one that took almost the entire Asgardian government hostage. I watch as Sigan passes among the unnoticed Midgardian servants, whispering reassurance and revolution. on her face she pushes the door inwards and then she sees Loki and all the hardness and misery melt away in an instant
with tears in her eyes, Sigyn leaves. It's here the recording starts to fully break down. Whole areas of the train are nothing but static for hours, with a few snatches of distorted audio. I find a few seconds of Loki wandering the carriages, other passengers staring at her in shock and horror. There's some audio of Thor and Sigyn discussing gaining access to something. A looped clip of a guard dragging Loki to Odin's carriage. The still of Thor and Sigyn standing in front of the engine room, the one camera that never worked. And Thor is bleeding. And then, ten minutes of Odin staring directly into camera. I can't tell if it's frozen or not, but given her erratic behavior, I can't shake the feeling that she's looking at me. Then, distortion, static, nothing. And that's all I have. Four suspects, any of whom could have destroyed the train by accident or by design. I watch and re-watch the footage I have, desperate for any clue I might have missed. On the monitors, their faces stare out. Expressions set in determination and resolve. And I have no idea what happens next. Odin, there will be no more of your despair. Look away left and I really, really don't want to use it. 
Shortly after the train fails to emerge, a group of bandits turned up to prey on the chaos. Their weapons and clothing were utterly alien, and it took almost 20 years to catch them. More infuriating in the 60 years since, they have stubbornly refused to age. But if anyone has the technological knowledge to know what happened in the Bifrost, it's them. I hate them. Ah, good morning, Inspector Lift. Bonaram. And what can we do for you this fine prison day? Is it about the Bifrost? Yes, how did you know? Yes, it arrived three days ago. Ah, oh, well, we should be going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good luck with that. No, I, I'm only here because I need to understand what happened. What happened in the Bifrost? Ah, oh, well then, we shall tell you. Oh, no, you don't need to... No. Shut up! Shut it! No singing. I am sick of your singing. Where did you even get that violin? What? Just tell me what happened. Well, if you're going to be like that, why don't you just read the black box? I can't. It's too corrupted. Is that all, Ivy? Give it here. It's about one third decrypted. <laughs> Try that. I, I see it all now. The first recording that matters that really matters is in the engine room. Thor and Sigan are standing there staring at where the engine should be. <laughs> but there is no engine. A man lies upon a silver altar. His name is Kvasir, a low-level member of the Midgardian resistance, but that's not important. What is important is the dozen tubes and lines feeding from his veins into the gears and glyphs and grooves that line the chamber. They are made of the same metal as the track and hum like a far-off chant. From their faces, neither Thor nor Sigan knew what was in this room. After a moment's horrified silence, they run. Sigan to pull Kvasir off Tubes and lines coming out, blood gushing and leaking. Thor running to the controls, throwing switches, pulling levers. The glyphs, the sigils shifting, moving their constellations, and then they stop. I don't know if it was pulling out Kvasir or Thor meddling with the controls, but something has gone very, very wrong. And the walls begin to tear! And the walls 
of the train, the mood of the force, the hollow reality, twisting in its thrall to the odds of God, the key of the gate, through whose cascading rainbow being the train has come. Yogg's of God, who is the Michael Scott, whose dread invocation now shattered, leads them to the roiling nuclear chaos of the mad demon sultan at the center of reality. A billion screaming squamous things approach, clawing and oozing through the jagged tatters of the same world. All the doors are open. Through the breaking cracks in space they come up, face a thousand faces screaming, tearing through from where the starlight bear will die and carry through the walls their squamous goals will bring their balls, now victims one and all, tearing at the seams. Their now inverted screams will sound upon the breeze in the corner of dreams. Face it hard, my door will play his part. He's ripped apart, his scream of pain that goes insanely through the train and never wins. First to die, he's gonna lie by his own cry, the end is nigh. And now his golden eyes, still shining bright, are burst across the sky like the rainbow teeth of night. And he'll never know why. Standing there in that hellish chamber. The no longer beating heart of the Bifrost. Thor and Sigan stare in new horror at the leaking figure before them. The arcane glyphs and sigils spinning dry. All that powered and protected the train bleeds away. What have you done? I have him back on the guard hiding on the road. Oh, mother, you must pay. Without the regulating pump of the train, Farsi convulses and bleeds in a matter of seconds. Screams can be heard from the carriages behind. And as it laps at their boots in a shallow crimson tide, Thor turns and walks away to do his work. In the carriages behind them, the window is no bar to the giant raging fire of an ever-dying star that reaches, rends, seizes poor doomed fray. No weapon, no defense, as his void scorched flesh is flayed. His sister Freya watches, but her new throat cannot scream. As Odor, her husband, fades as though a dream. In the now eternal instant of her loss, her eyes grow wet. But instead of tears, what falls is golden red as the final sunset. The silver and the platinum of etchings on the wall reach to her her melted flesh their cold embrace appalls she fuses to the core of this abomination train always watching without ever away to voice her pain she sees as tear he grows the hand he lost to Fenrir's blade as he fights the teeth of rabid Garm whose mind like sand has slipped away but no new limb will save him from Garm's devouring jaws but his fingers find his heart and they merge dead upon the floor and cosmic In Odin's carriage, she watches through the observation deck, untouched by the chaos. Loki stares at her, mind finally clear. What is this inside my mind? It drags out what I left behind. My eyes now clear, the call begun so long ago. Odin, what have you done?
together. From the blood-soaked engine room, Thor emerges, mind razor-keen for vengeance. Both of them face a wall of claws and teeth and eyes and flesh, unknown and squamous things from the spaces between reality, lit by the rainbow glow of the key and the gate through which the train still passes. They steal themselves and advance. remains that litter the floor. Thor and Loki lock eyes. You don't I know you Thor weren't we friends once
Thor emerges from a wall of sharpened flesh and slime slick meat. He is wounded, bleeding in a hundred places, his hands clutching an engineer's hammer, now chipped and caked in gore. He kicks the entrance open. Behind it, what once was Odin laughs. Her body long and undulating, her one eye now vast and staring, as she who once styled herself the All-Mother is transformed by the touch of gods she had unknowingly served for so long. What the fuck have you done? I have given our people a apotheosis, a final completion, the touch and gaze of those to whom we are less than nothing. You planned this. You knew this would happen. When I first built this train, this snaky engine of change, I could not have guessed this is where the songs I dreamt would be. But we are here, and when the train reaches Midgard, our new gods will fall and share their gift with all. You're insane. Sanity has no space. I am the serpent that shall poison the sky and boil the sea. The land shall freeze eternal and gods have gone back into the heads, whose voice I heard when first we built the track so long ago. All shall know my rule to be the last, and none shall survive my will. No! Killing me will not save your world. I don't care. the glass wall of the observation deck. He cannot escape, but any window with a hammer is also an emergency exit. And the stars claim them both. stop what they have touched following through into our world but they can delay it keep the train on the track as long as possible together
uncouple the carriages behind and reset the controls. Loki lays upon the altar, and Sigyn pushes a single line into her wife's heart. All she lets through is a drip, 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 flowing through the glyphs and gears. When Loki's heart's blood is gone, the train will arrive. But until then, they are together. Through the pain, Loki kisses Sigurd. train has arrived and it's only a matter of time. I have chartered a small ship and as soon as I've finished this drink, I'm setting off to the Hodmimis mining colony far from the Yggdrasil system. I'm not stopping there. Just refuel and keep going. If anyone gets this report in time, I suggest you do the same. Inspector Second Class, Ifrasir Edda, signing off. Good luck. Mayday, this is the exploration vessel Nakbar. Require immediate assistance. Message repeat. Hello? We've lost contact with the research outpost of a coma. Hello? Anyone here? Thank you. Thank you. We have been the mechanisms, and that was the Bifrost incident. Now, we are doing a Kickstarter to get that recorded as we do with most of our albums. Uh, it has gone live as of. Basically, when we played the first note, it was live. So, uh, you're all too slow. Um, so. Yes, uh, sponsor us, and then you can get a CD. You can get all sorts of lovely goodies. Uh, some, uh, I mean, nothing too squamous. Um, Just for maybe you. for you. But thank you all for coming out. Thank you all for listening to our debut. And yes, please support the Kickstarter. And if any of you don't have any of the other CDs, etc., that we have, we are selling them. So also buy them. Now. Obviously, that was, I mean, was sort of a downer ending, like usual, but also, also like, ah! <laughs> you know? Anyway, um, Space Pirates. <laughs> what shall we do with a drunk Space Pirate? What shall we do with a drunk Space Pirate? What shall we do with a drunk Distant stars away. Oh.